so many things with a the ball. Then maybe if we got more organized, we would be able to achieve a lot more. I know that Jamaicans are also obsessed with the skills of the Brazilian football. And like Jeffrey Maxwell, I don't know how oh, Jeffrey's not wearing the Brazilian cap today. <laughs> you know, he looks like Brazilian and he always wears the Brazilian cap. And I said I wanted to change that. I wanted it Jamaica. And so I went to Brazil and I recruited a gentleman who looked like a Brazilian. In fact, whilst I was interviewing a number of candidates, there were some who didn't look like Brazilians. And I said, you know, I wouldn't select you because, of course, I'm not entirely a technical a person in football, with the management skills. So I took with me David Horton. And David told me, OK, that candidate is better. I said, no, in addition to all of that, knowing the Jamaican people and the mindset that I had, that candidate had to look like a Brazilian. And so I selected Rene Simons. And my God, the rest is history where that is concerned. He came here and he made it happen. Now, what has happened since? several things and it is only at a function like this and on an occasion like this that you will realize some of the things which have happened since the main outcome ladies and gentlemen is that a number of our players our jamaican players are now Playing their trade overseas. Ricardo Bibi Gardner, a youngster who went to Woolmers, has excelled. In fact, I was told that for several years, and this is not for the tax man, no pun intended here, but for many years, Bibi was earning in a in excess of uh, upwards of uh, 25,000 pounds per week. That went on for years, so he can do the maths. Many others have benefited. In fact, this youngster from Reno, who is now, he's called, his alias is Wild Boy, Lawrence, he was a goalkeeper. When we got back from France, a year after, I was told that Lawrence had about four houses out of football. Because he was always broke. He, he never spent any of his money. <laughs> but he was investing in buying taxes and buying a housing trust. And, you know, he invested wisely. And so that is true for many. Today, we have several players, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about players like Jevon Watson, Kimar Lawrence, Darren Mattox, Omar Holness, Dwayne Miller, Dwayne Carr, Jermaine Taylor, Andre Blake, to name a few. All these youngsters are out there earning reasonable bucks. Rudolph Austin, you know, to name a few. We have, for example, I will tell you, Jamaica in the MLS. In the United States, Jamaica has more players in the MLS league than any other country outside of the United States. Sure you didn't know that. I spoke with Don Garber, who's the commissioner of the league, the owner of the league, and he said, Captain, I'm proud. I said, why are you so proud? He said, because 
most, you're, you're a countryman. We have more Jamaicans in my league than any other country. The United States is the only country that, 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 that would have more players than Jamaica. And I, I really felt proud because it's an opportunity for these youngsters to further their, their, their career. And, and so we cannot take these things for granted. We don't think about it. <clears throat> Now, it's important that we mention all these points because quite often, you know, there are a lot of debates as to whether or not the player who represents Jamaica is local based or we should allow. No, I don't give a biscuit. My view is that the best player or the best pool of players should represent this country. It doesn't matter. Once you are a qualified candidate, then you should be given the opportunity if your competence certainly allows for that. And so I am very, very, very thrilled that we currently have a mix. And you know what? Looking at the figures, in the recently concluded Gold Cup in the United States, 17 of the 25 players, Jeffrey, who participated in the Gold Cup are, in fact, Jamaican-born players. 17 or 25. The rest are from out of the United Kingdom. So I, I think that's tremendous. That's tremendous. So I am hoping that after this, Jeffrey, because I know you were one of those persons who talk about the local base now getting a chance. <laughs> I have an opportunity <laughs> now, so I'm taking it. <laughs> so happy when I saw you, I said, you know, when I got to this part, <laughs> I will really give you some sticks. <laughs> but you're my friend. <laughs> so it just goes to show that it, it, it works because the English-based players, they bring a level of professionalism that is very necessary. You remember the days of Paul Hall, Dion Burton, Fitzroy Simpson. Now, maybe in the game uh, on Friday, you will have maybe one or two players who are now playing their trade here in Jamaica on the field. But regardless, you're going to still have most of the players from, from overseas. But again, most are our players who learn the trade here and who are good enough to be invited to take up a contract. So I hope as of today, we will not hear any of those talks. And I'm sure Jeffrey will be a messenger of that. Just before I, I go much further, let me say here that Jamaica has also been concentrating on women's football. And I would love to see a team from the UWI participate in a, in a, I know you have ladies who play here, but in terms of stepping up on the ladder. Because when I look at the performance of the men's team, you know what I said? Regardless of how we play the sport, you, 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 you know, they are, they are, they are, the brain power comes in. Because when I look at what is happening now with the UW Premier League team, clearly a message is being sent. That if you approach football 
in a tactical way. Of course, you have to be physical. But in addition to being physical, the tactical aspect, the mind aspect is very important. And you know what? I'll be asking the statisticians to do a comparison and to use the achievements of the UWI team to teach the youngsters a couple of lessons. There's no reason a team from UWI should be beating the champion team, for example, in the gardens. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You would agree with me. It's not because these, the people out there at Arnett, their job is, is, is football. It's, it's the chaps who play for UWI. Yes, students. Most of them are. Yet, they were able to trounce Arnett, the great boys' town. And that, to me, is saying something. I don't know how many people took time out to really figure that out. I'm sure Jeffrey, I don't know. You coast here at some time, Jeff. You? <laughs> so, so you know that's. A, and I'm not picking at you, Jeff, but I mean. <laughs> all right. I know you. You, you would have had to ask. <laughs> 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 so you see, Jeffrey's involved. <laughs> so, you know, football, my dear friends is really 